I'm about to teach you how to run errands. How you can make 250 miles in 9 hours without leaving the county. You might be wondering how I know this. Well, I was in your place. Well, probably not. You're, you just want to hear me tell stories. But I did drive. Or I didn't drive. I helped with 250 miles of errands from 7 a.m. to like... 8 p.m., so 13 hours, even more. It doesn't really sound that much impressive, but again, we didn't even leave our county. Anyway, this all starts with one thing that happened the night before. One of my dad's close students, if you're wondering, my dad's a teacher. That's why I said students. One of his closest students, or one of his friends now, sister, had a flat tire. So we drove like 40 miles to her house to check the tire. Really didn't have a flat tire, we thought it was broken. You see, we had a neighbor who used to live next to us who had a mowing business, so he'd fix every now and then. So, you know, my dad knew a thing or two because we see a thing or two. We are object, bum, blah, 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 bum. Anyone remember those commercials? Just me. Okay. Anyway, uh, we come over here to fix the llama or bring him blocks of wood and a jack. Uh, it turns out it was just a flat tire. So we threw in the crate, drove home, woke up at 7 o'clock, and drove to the local auto repair store. And I'm not kidding. At this auto repair store, there are a fleet of cars. I'm not even going to call it that. A fleet. Like, tons upon tons upon tons. Like, most of them are scrap, okay? But most of them are people who decided it would be a good idea to pour sugar in their gas tank. <laughs> It works, I tell you. I learned it on Instagram. If you pour a whole bag of sugar in your gas tank, it'll clean the motor and give it a nice sweet treat. I'm kidding. Don't pour sugar in your gas tank. It'll cost you like $20. Okay, that really ain't that much, but it's kind of an inconvenience to wait like 30 minutes for someone to fix your car while you can just not pour sugar down your gas tank. Anyway, you know, we get the tire filled up. And who knew? I don't know what brand uh, lawnmower it is, so I'm just going to pronounce the Swedish-made one. Harzakovna. And that's how you say it. I don't have a script pulled up. This is, like, totally, was it called? Elevator pitched? No, not really. This is, like, wow, this is the first cut. Anyway, we got the tire fix but for some reason Harzakovna I guess that's what the brand was they made their tires so hard to inflate so we spent like the guy fixing it like for 15 minutes was searching for the tube to the tire it's a lawnmower tire it's literally nine inches Harzakovna what are you thinking what if I have a flat and I need to refill it think Please, just think, Harzakovna. So, you know, after that, uh, we had to go to another place. What did we have to do? We had to get some jewelry fixed. Again, the same person who we fixed the tire. So, we decided that we'd get, like, her necklace chain. It broke. So, we decided to fix it. So, we go into this jewelry store, and that's really it. That's really all that happened. Nothing really out of the ordinary happened. So, yeah, I just decided I'd bring that up. It had, like, 50 miles on the truck out of the 250. Then after this, uh, we helped out one of my dad's friends do one thing. That one thing was fix a truck of his. And uh, since he hauls stuff, uh, a taillight on his truck went out. So we had to try and fix it. So, you know, we're all laying under here trying to fix this light. We decided to give up and call, like, a hotline. To answer these questions. Uh, the hotline was controlled by a robot. I'm not lying. The voice sounded like this. It sounded like this. Uh, it did. It Like, if you're going to have a deep fake of a voice to han answer your very bad hotline, then try and get a robot that sounds realistic. So anyway, we call it, and he's like, yeah, I think uh, this yellow wire is connected to, to the bottom left tail light, but I'm not sure. And they'll say, okay, let me go talk to my experts here. I think you are wrong. And they'll come back and play some of the worst hold music ever. Like, you know the Dairy Queen ad with, like, the xylophone that goes... 
<laughs> if I could play a sound of it, I'll cut it out. If I'll play it where this is. But if I couldn't, then there's just going to be a bunch of silence. And I'm very sorry. I might add something in it. Who knows? Anyway, we we get back, and he's like, "Yeah, there should be a yellow wire to the bottom left tail light." Even though that's exactly what he said. He was repeating his information. This went on for an hour before his phone died. And we decided, yeah, we got soldered up. We're good. So it started working good. You know, that that was the end of that story. You know? And also, I'm going off topic here. I think I said at the beginning of the video, probably not. I wasn't running errands in a normal modern day car. I was driving in a, in a truck that my dad daily drives, a 1955 Chevrolet. 54, technically, they they made two different models that year. I think they made that model up until October, and then switched it in November and December. So those are quite rare to find. Uh, I know you don't want to hear specs on it, but, yeah, I'm, not, I'm just not going to say any specs on it. And also, back in the 50s, uh, electric windshield wipers weren't a thing. This is important for what I'm about to say. Trust me. They were vacuum. And again, I'm going off topic, but it's, it rained three times this summer. And I remember them all fondly. We did not put no weather sealing in the car. We did not. And it was using those vacuum windshield wipers. By the way, they don't work. They just go whoop, boo, whoop, boo, whoop, boo, and do nothing. One time it helped in a drizzle just a little bit. But some days, it'll get to like 20 mile an hour winds. And we'll be driving through here. Rain will start coming through the door. Just flooding through it. The wind glass won't move because there's so much wind. You have the water blowing right in your face. You're about to drown in the cab. And then all of a sudden, pling! The windshield wiper fell off. Into like a barren ditch. This didn't happen this summer. This happened last winter. I, mean, I was driving it one day, it was raining, and he hears the windshield wiper fall off. He drove home, he daily drove it every day till he could find it. He couldn't. He opens up the hood to get an oil check. The windshield wiper is sitting on top of like the manifold valve cover thing. That thing, sitting right in between it. How? How? We don't know to this day. How did that happen? We heard it fall. I was in there. So now back to like our topic. After we did that, uh, you know, we filled up on gas. Everyone like sitting at the gas station. Yeah, uh, that's it. Really, there's a lot of people who really enjoy it. And then there's a lot of people who ask like the silliest questions. Well, uh, is it a Chevrolet? Well, if you read the grill, it does say Chevrolet. Well, uh, is it drivable? Well, what do you think? Did we just leave it here to rot and push it here? No, we drove it. These were actually real questions we got this summer. I'm not joking. I'm not joking. I'm not, I tell you, I am not joking. But people thought it. People thought that for some reason. I will never know. But you know what? You know, we eat lunch, you know, and then we return the flat tire to her. And I will say... On the way there has some of the, great, the greatest sunset I've ever seen. The greatest sunset I've ever seen. This is the second. This is my second favorite. That, the one I'm about to tell you about. My favorite sunset I've ever seen. I might do a video in the near future where I rank every state in the U.S. And I, I was going to bring it up now, but in case that video ever comes out, you can use this to know where I'm ranking Kansas. I went through Kansas a few months back, and their sunset is amazing. It makes up for the barren wasteland, that is it.